Our youth were at Baptist Youth Camp this week, virtually. And the theme of youth camp this week was living and being in exile. Our youth have gone to camp for a long, long time. And we are grateful for those across the years who have gone with them as leaders and guides. We're grateful for John Kent, who preached not too long ago here, one of our own, who helps direct BYC. And of course, many of our parents and youth across generations are hard-pressed to think of BYC without the outstanding leadership and good pastoral touch of Dale Osborne. So we're grateful that our kids, joining others from this network of other like-minded Baptist congregations, have been able to get together. But note the theme, exile. To be in exile is to be separated, displaced, relocated for a time. The psalm lesson that Laney read for us is a psalm that tries to lament what it means to be removed from one's place. How can we sing the Lord's song in a new land? In fact, the psalm goes on to say that there are at times the torment of tormentors sort of kicking them, reminding them that they are refugees. How can we do that? We remember back when. And now this passage that I just read for us from Jeremiah is Jeremiah's letter to the Israelites who are living in Babylon because they have been exiled, separated, relocated. Marcus Borg, the great New Testament scholar, used to say that one of the three big grand narrative stories of the entire Bible is the story, the metaphor of exile and return. Historically, the exile has everything to do with ancient Israel being relocated after being conquered by the Babylonians. So in the middle 500s, they find themselves in a different place. All of the trappings of home, gone. They've made that 500 mile trek out into the desert. Their temple lies in ruins. They don't speak the language, the food is different. Exile means no longer at home. So what do you do when you're no longer at home? Do you pine for the good old days or do you as Jeremiah encourages his listeners to do, while you're there, while you're in exile, build, plant, dream of a different life, marry, pray, and live into the welfare of that place because the welfare of that place is your own welfare. Now, Jeremiah has to do that because there have been some false prophets who have said, uh, don't unpack your bags, don't unpack your bags, this exile is not going to last all that long. You know, like a miracle, it will one day go away. To which Jeremiah says, you know what? The exile is your home. Now there's a thought. 
that in these four plus months that we've been away from this home for worship, we have had to adapt and adjust and we have had to chart new paths. You have certainly had to do that in your own homes, among family members. You know what it has like to be separated, which as is at the heart of exile, to be separated, to be removed. And you understand too, the spiritual significance of exile isn't just that you've been conquered by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. You've understood that this moment in world history has had to move you somewhere else. So what do you do when you're somewhere else? He says, build, plant, imagine, pray, and seek the welfare of that place because the welfare, the shalom, the peace, the well-being, the wholeness of that place is yours. That doesn't mean to say, don't give up what home was and what home can look like again. It just means that whenever we are able to come back into this place, we will be different. In fact, if we're not different, when we come back into this sanctuary as the people of God, we would have lost a great opportunity. For what has been the welfare, the benefit of this time for you, for us, for all of us? We've had to confront what are the things that we really have been clinging to that we really need to let go of. We thought that they were really important, and now not so much. And what are the things that we've held tighter during this time because we've needed to? Faith, hope, love, neighborliness, understanding that we're part and parcel of systems that keep othering other people and it must stop. We've been reminded of what it is like to live by faith, not by sight. We will be different when we come back into this place. I sure hope we will be. What it means to be in exile is to understand that the journey is our home. An old African-American spiritual has that refrain, the journey is our home. And just like that labyrinth out there, and just like our kids, you and I know that life's journey is filled with the unexpected and it will take you places that won't look and feel like home. And your comfort zone is going to have to be stretched. You're going to be stretched. And God is with us in all of that. God's with us in the form of a new neighbor who will fight through prejudice and bigotry to get to know and love you and you them. To be in exile doesn't mean a life sentence in jail. It does mean that while you were there, the return to home is really an invitation for you and for us to return to the things that really matter. To look into the face of someone and say, I love you. Please forgive me. Will we walk through this life together?
Will we seek justice, love, mercy, kindness, and walk humbly with God together to be in exile? is maybe the opportunity we've all been looking for to reconnect with the center, not just the center of a labyrinth, but the center which is God. May it be so. Amen and amen.